Karen McCluskey, co-director of the Scottish Violence Reduction Unit. Thanks for seeing us today. Thank you. You have been termed a gangbuster, which is a phrase you don't like, but you've had a huge impact in Glasgow, um, by all accounts. But one important question is, is, is when we say gang, what do we mean? Well, there's a really interesting thing. I don't like the term gangbuster. I'm actually not against gangs. I'm against what they do. And for us, it was about violence. I wanted them to stop the violence. I can't stop them hanging around in groups, you know? And I've never been that precious about the definitions, and I know that lots of people are just now, three or more people involved in crime, you know. Lots of the young boys that I talk to don't even think they're in a gang. They're hanging around with their friends, sometimes really quite toxic, um, but they don't think they're in a gang. Is it useful then to use the term, do you think? Well, is it useful for academics? Perhaps. But can you tell me, does, does the average person who's in middle class suburbia know what the definition of a gang is? When they open their curtains and they look at a, a group of young people outside, they're automatically going to think that that's a gang because they don't know what the term is. And I don't want them to be frightened of young people. 99% of young people live good lives, they aspire, they want exactly the same as us. And I think it's actually quite catastrophic to start to say every group is a gang and they're all out for it, you know, they're, they're all after you because that's just not the truth. Is it similarly catastrophic to have kind of policy orientated around the concept of, of gangs? I've found that particularly some of the gang members, they commit offences on their own, they commit offences in pairs and they commit offences in groups. So they don't just wait until they're in a group or a gang to commit an offence. Do I think you, you perhaps need to, to look at the concept of a group and, and think of different ways to try and interact with them? Yes, you do. So perhaps some policy around gangs is, is quite important. You know, and obviously, yes, I mean, even though I say, you know, they commit offences other places, I do look at them in groups and I realise that that's a place that I can motivate them to change. I can use their friends to motivate them. So I use every tactic, all levers. So yes, it is. But gangs are a manifestation of other things, about deprivation about aspiration, about lack of ma a manageable, predictable life. And sometimes the gangs give them that, so we shouldn't lose that side of it as well. One of the, the real interests in, I think, probably what, what you do and what you've achieved has emanated from the riots. Um, and one interesting question everyone wanted to know um, after August was why it didn't happen in Scotland. Any thoughts? Well, I think the weather had something to do with it. I mean, you know, there's, there's little doubt that the weather in Scotland is not great. And it was sort of horizontal rain, which is the only sort of rain we seem to get in Scotland. Mm. You know, it was raining in other parts as well. It, it was, mm. but I was heading north that time, actually, <laughs> and um, driving. I'd love to tell you the positive things were, but somebody had made a great comment on the television, and, and I've stolen it ever since. He said, we were policing greedy people, not angry people. We didn't aspire to greed which is a really interesting thing. Maybe that's a negative thing. Aspiration. You need aspiration for a good life, to be happy and healthy and your life to be manageable and, you know, all these different things. And our guys didn't do that. Now, we did quash some of the Facebook, you know, Strathclyde Police did lots of work around quashing some of the Facebook, um, you know, let's start a riot. But it didn't happen. Now, that might be to do with geography, but I think that is a bit to do with aspiration. Mm. And... Um, I suppose there's probably some more thought needs to go into that about why it didn't happen in Scotland and I'd love to take some positives from it but I think I've got to be measured. To what extent do you think gangs was the cause or a major factor in what happened? Well I know that lots of the results aren't out yet you know and lots of the, the work's not out yet. I think it was quite a small percentage that was gangs and that's not to say that gangs aren't an issue but we talked before about the fact that people offend on their own and you know in pairs and in groups. They weren't all out there as a group. I think what it showed was there's a very fine veneer between a lawful society and an unlawful society. You need good policing, but you also need good communities to stop that sort of thing from happening.